If you are shopping for a new tractor, then you have some big decisions to make, not just the right model, the right size, but how to outfit and equip that tractor. Making the wrong decision up front can cost you a lot of money down the road, or at least be a major inconvenience. So I'm asked all the time for advice on what to buy with my tractor, and while I don't sell new tractors, I do have my own view, my own opinion on what I think is a good value or a good decision to get when you're buying new. So let's go through those now, give you the quick rundown of what you should get, what you shouldn't get. Let's see if you agree. If you guys own a tractor out there and you're watching right now, if you have a regret of something you didn't get new or something that you think you're wasting your money on if you do get it, let us know, leave a comment down below. And we're gonna wrap up today's list with the upgrades that I don't think are worth the money. And speaking of that, one of the things you may not be able to get from your dealer, but you could, depends on the dealer you're working with, are Bora wheel spacers. And if you're new to the tractor world, then something that you'll quickly find out is how tippy these tractors are side to side. They're just very long and skinny. They don't have a lot of stability. So adding wheel spacers can widen that footprint and make a big difference. Bora is a made in America solution. They offer a lifetime warranty. You can find more about them at the link down below. All right, let's get started with this list. But remember, this is my opinion. So you could have a different take on it, but I do have a lot of experience in different situations, different applications. I've probably changed my opinion as time has gone on as well. But the first one I wanna to talk to you about are gonna be remotes. And if you don't know what a remote is, you're gonna have two of them that are essentially standard on just about every tractor out there. One remote is going to raise and lower your front end loader. The second remote is gonna curl or roll your loader bucket. So if you're buying a tractor that has a front end loader on it, you have two remotes already on it. However, if you wanna use a grapple down the road or maybe a hydraulic angling snow plow, or maybe on the backside you wanna add a top and a tilt kit, or we've used snow blowers that require hydraulics to rotate the chute. There's a lot of attachments out there that require those hydraulics. You're gonna need more than just the basic two remotes that come with your tractor. Add on a third function for the front, a fourth and a fifth remote for the back. There's a lot of options, a lot of ways to configure it, but ask your dealer about that and get it set up right from the beginning. The reason I mentioned getting these up front with your tractor if you're buying it new is because it's typically a lot more expensive to go back after the fact and have these remotes, these extra hydraulics added onto your tractor. But if you do find yourself in that situation, you need additional hydraulics on your tractor and you don't have them, we partner with a company called Summit Hydraulics. They are a supplier of do-it-yourself DIY DIY solutions where you can add on those additional hydraulics, those additional circuits to your tractor. You can save 5% with code GWT. We've done some videos on their products as well, but check them out. There'll be a link down below. So one quick example of this, you know, there was a gentleman that had a 1025R with a Mauser cab on it, and he wanted to add on the third function after the fact. So we had to take his 1025R into the John Deere dealer, and it's essentially an all day project. They have to take the entire cab off of the tractor, disassemble the fenders, all sorts of stuff to get this uh, hydraulic kit installed on there. And so it's not just the materials, it's all of the labor that's involved with removing the whole cab, the fenders, everything else that goes into it, and then putting it all back on afterwards, it really starts to add up and it can be a costly mistake. So one add-on that I have changed my mind on personally is gonna be the Air Ride C. And not every model out there is gonna have this upgradable option available to them. But if it is something that you can get for your model, I used to think it wasn't really worth it. However, I guess maybe as I've aged more and more, I have found comfort to be a higher priority on my list. And I think it is well worth the expense to upgrade and get the air ride seat. The one downside, well, I guess two downsides is it's a pretty expensive upgrade to get number one, but number two, they do tend to leak down over time. So if you kind of have that perfect setting, it can be hard to always get back to that. However, you are just pulling or pushing a little knob to increase or decrease the amount of air pressure in your seat. It provides an exceptional improvement to ride quality and something that I am very happy I have every time I sit on my tractor. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's video. If you would love to see more, we'd love to have you subscribe subscribe, hit that button down below to follow along. We also have over 450 videos already out there for you to take a look at. And if you own a tractor or you're going to be buying one soon, you're going to need some tractor attachments. We can help you with that. We sell and ship all over the country. Check us out at goodworkstractors.com. You know, I've also changed my mind on this one as I've gotten older, and this is a hard pill to swallow because it's a very expensive upgrade, and that's a factory cab adding one onto your tractor if the series you're looking at has that available. And I know I'm probably just getting to be a wimp in my old age, but the cold in the wintertime is becoming unbearable at some points. You know, the heat in the summertime is just about the same, you know, where you have the bugs, you have the dust, 
you have the rain, you have all sorts of different weather conditions that are out there. Maybe you, you have skin issues, you know, you're just trying to protect your skin from the sun. There's a lot of reasons that you may want a cab and it could be beneficial. If you are planning on keeping your tractor for a lot of years, right, you can probably more easily justify an investment like that. You can chop that cost up over every month or every year, whatever it is, and kind of look at it, view it a different way and, and realize that benefit every time and every hour you are spending in your tractor. I used to think an open station was where it's at and that was primarily driven by cost. However, if you have the room in your budget, I would highly encourage you to look at getting a cab. And when I say that, I mean one with heat and air conditioning. And why I say think about getting this when you're getting that tractor new or right up front, even if you're looking used, is because you can't add on a factory cab down the road. There's no way to take that open ROP station off and put on a factory cab with the air conditioning and heat you can add on aftermarket cabs that have heat only but it's a totally different ball game the one caveat is that curtis does have a cab for um, a, a very limited amount of kubota tractors which has an ac unit up top you don't see much about it out there but it is going to be an option for a very limited number of you if you are shopping brand new you are going to get to pick your loader on certain series of tractors. Let's use the John Deere 3R series of tractors for an example. Currently, you will have the 300R and the 320R to choose from. Yes, there's gonna be a price difference. If you're gonna keep your tractor for any length of time, don't chintz out and get the cheaper one. Get the better of the two options, which is the 320R. You're gonna be able to lift more weight. You're gonna lift it higher. This is one of those options that I don't even know why John Deere offers a cheaper model still. It's not a huge price difference between the two, and if you're gonna keep your tractor for any period of time that price difference is really going to wash out pretty darn quickly when you can lift higher you can lift more weight you can do more with your tractor it's going to be easier to resell it if you do need to do that down the road it's just a no-brainer in my opinion and i wouldn't even consider for any reason going with that cheaper option now as we're going through this you know whether you have a john deere a kubota mahindra massey coyote ls whatever it is you can take the same kind of information and take it to the dealer you're working with and i don't know sometimes they change right what's available and what's not for different tractor series different tractor models so don't be afraid to ask them the questions because a lot of times these dealers are getting new salesmen right and they're not going to be up to speed with every single option that's available so i'd encourage you to look through all the literature do your homework don't rely on that salesman to know everything in and out and this doesn't mean they're a bad salesman but oftentimes i find these tractor manufacturers in general don't do a bang up job of making it plain as day on what's available for every tractor model out there so do your own digging read through the forums find all that literature you can look through every corner of the websites that you can for the manufacturers to see what is available because again oftentimes these are cheaper things to get up front or features that you can't get after the fact so do your homework ahead of time and on that note let's talk about buckets and we're going to harp on john deere and i made a whole video about john deere's standard duty bucket last year and how it's kind of a, a weak design and you'll see a lot of the buckets if you go looking in the used market that are wrinkled up on the top edge or maybe in the side edge they're bent in they're bent out they're just kind of wonky right and i think those standard duty buckets just have too thin of a material in my opinion now john deere does offer a heavy duty bucket that is reinforced on the sides on the top it's pre-drilled for a cutting edge along the bottom as well it's worth the investment worth the upgrade to get that in my opinion now if you do have one of the standard duty buckets one of the cool attachments or accessories you can get for that is going to be from another partner of ours ju fabworks they make these bucket brackets that go right along the top you can drill them in so they're going to give you more versatility uh, grab hooks a receiver uh, tie off points that kind of thing but they also reinforce those standard duty buckets as well so you're going to get kind of a, a two for one you know you're going to get the reinforcement and then some more versatility out of it so you go to ju fabworks you use code gwt to save five percent off of your order now rumor on the street is that jeff is going to be dropping off some kubota brackets as well so we should be seeing those soon he's coming out with more products and if you own a Kubota a Massey a Coyote an LS talk to those guys see what bucket options they have available whether that's the width or the standard duty heavy duty type of thing I do think in general the standard duty Kubota buckets are built a little beefier than the John Deere buckets so you may not need anything else besides that standard bucket but it's worth looking into. All right, so this next one is technically something you can get after the fact. You can add it on fairly easy, but the cost is gonna go way up because 
Well, a couple of reasons. So what I'm talking about is liquid ballast or what you can fill your tires with. And that's going to be a good counterweight, a good ballast weight. So if you're using your front end loader over here, you know, the back of your tractor is going to be kind of light and want to lift up. So adding all that extra weight inside your tires, it's out of the way. It's very cheap to do. And it's going to help you stay planted to the ground when you're lifting a lot of weight up with your front end loader. You know, I'm big on safety. I'm big on counterweight ballast. We offer a lot of solutions as well. And I don't think typically loading your tires is the only thing you need to do you should put wheel weights on you should put uh, weight off the three-point hitch as well and we can help you with those kinds of solutions but it's a really good start a really affordable way to do it but it's the most affordable if you have it done while your tractor's already at the dealer if you have it done later on you hopefully have a trailer to take your tractor in um, to your tractor dealer or your tire dealer to get it done. But if you don't, then you need to pay them to come out and do it. And it's gonna probably come close to doubling the cost of getting that done. And so it's gonna be a lot more affordable to do it up front. Another one that is often overlooked, but fortunately, less and less is going to be a quick attach and i'm talking about two different areas primarily the first is going to be the connection point between your loader and your bucket now you really don't see this anymore with john deere they include a quick attach standard with all of their loaders most Kubota dealers are starting to highly recommend this but you'll see some Kubota dealers still quote it with a pinned bucket I'm not really sure what Coyote Mahindra LS and, and on and on are doing, but make sure you can see it specifically called out that it's a quick attach bucket, whether that's a John Deere quick attach or a skid steer quick attach. Basically what that means is you can quickly separate your bucket from the loader and you can put on pallet forks, a snow pusher, a grapple, a bale spear, and the list goes on. If you don't get that system up front, you can convert it to a quick attach bucket down the road, but it's probably going to cost two, three, four times the amount, depending on where you can find one of those conversion kits. We sell them, but they are almost, I think they're almost four times the cost now of an original Kubota kit. Part of that problem is because you then have to get a weld on plate for the back of your bucket to make that compatible too. So there's just a lot of work, a lot of headache that's involved in doing that. So make sure you're getting that quick attach up front. The one other area I see this happen is going to be on the John Deere 1023 and the 1025. And their mower deck is um, a really good system and it's called the auto connect system. So I think there's a disconnect between what I think of as auto connect and what John Deere means as auto connect uh, with their nomenclature. And so the standard auto connect deck from John Deere is going to be a drive over and auto attaching to the lift arm type of mechanism. All right. The one part that's missing from that is going to be the PTO coupler. That is not going to be standard auto connect. And I've learned the hard way about that over the years because I've bought and sold a lot of tractors and seeing something listed as auto connect doesn't mean you're going to automatically get that PTO quick coupler. You need to specifically ask if the PTO coupler itself is also auto connect, not just a lift mechanism. Okay, this next one I'm actually still a little vague on, all right? I don't really see it called out very clearly on a lot of different brochures, pamphlets, websites, information, that kind of thing. But I do know that there's going to be certain series of tractors that you can get two different size of tires with. And I don't mean different tread patterns. I mean different physical sizes of tires. You could have an R4 tread pattern, but one that's maybe an inch or two taller than the other one. And so this could make a big difference for certain customers if they want more ground clearance, or maybe they need to stay a little lower to fit inside their shop. So look to see if you have different options out there. I had a used tractor that came in one time that it just sat funny, right? And when I sat there and looked at it, it was just cockeyed just a little bit, just I couldn't figure it out. I checked the air pressures. I checked everything I could and everything was just, just like it should be. And I finally read the numbers on the tires and they were two different sizes, one size over here and a different size over here. And they both fit on that tractor on the same wheel even. And it was just throwing everything off. And so I had to end up replacing one of those tires to match up and make everything even out. So off the top of my head, the models I know that I've had multiple size tires on are gonna be the John Deere 4 Series with the R4 tread pattern. Uh, the John Deere 3E Series has had a couple different sizes. And then one that's, I don't think available from John Deere, but I've seen some guys do it. It's put, I think it's the 3E tires, the R4 tires onto a John Deere 2032R, 2038R, and they have just enough clearance. If any of you watching have done that or you know where to find that forum thread, I, I know I saw it, I think on greentractortalk.com, but it's pretty cool to see how you can add on those bigger wheels and tires to the 2R. Now, when you're shopping new, now is the time to decide what tread pattern you want on your tractor. It is going to be way cheaper to figure that out and get it done right up front versus trying to swap everything out down the road. 
If you want to go from a turf tire to an R4 or the R14 or the VersaTurf or an Ag tire, whatever it is, a lot of those different tires are going to require a different wheel as well. It gets very costly to swap all that out. I think it's the Kubota Standard L Series, like the L3901, for example. They will quote you a base price with the R1 Ag tire, so the taller, skinnier, kind of the farm tires that you would see on a skinnier, taller wheel. Pay the upgrade, it's not very much, maybe three, five, six hundred bucks to go to an R4 or to a different tread pattern if you want to. Gonna be way cheaper than doing that down the road. All right, so circumstances have changed for me and so has my opinion on this next feature and whether it's worth getting or not. It's not a cheap upgrade to get and while I used to absolutely love this feature, I don't anymore. And that's gonna be the mechanical self-leveling loader, the MSL. You may see NSL for non-self-leveling, MSL for mechanical self-leveling. But what that means is, let's just go this way, an, an NSL, let's say you, uh, you have a set of pallet forks like this and you're raising your loader up. As you raise it up, those forks are gonna rock back. However, if you have an MSL, what's gonna happen is if you have your forks level when you're down here, as you raise the loader up, those forks are gonna stay level the whole time. It's just some extra brackets that somehow do some magic and keep everything level. It's a pretty cool system that they figured out. However, I used to really like that system when I pretty much had my tractor planted at my shop and we just use it to move around pallets, load and unload trailers, that kind of a thing. However, now that I have a tractor out of the property, I've just found that an MSL is not needed. It's not required. I like to have quicker, easier control over the curl roll function of my, my loader and kind of be able to adjust that a little bit better like using a stump bucket, using a grapple, something else. And I don't think that the MSL is really worth the upgrade. I do think that this is one of those points that's probably gonna get some more disagreement than some of the others out there. It's just my opinion. It's a decent chunk of money to do the upgrade and I just don't know if it's worth it. Now the one caveat to that is I've heard it does increase the lift capacity. I'm not really sure how that happens or how much merit there is to it. I also don't know if you always need more lift capacity than what comes with the tractor, but I think that's worth pointing out. So right now, one of the options I don't think is worth getting on some of these tractors, take the John Deere 2032, 2038R for example, is gonna be a single point hydraulic disconnect for the front end loader. And it's not that I don't think it's a pretty cool, pretty handy feature to have on your tractor. And if you do have um, you know, bad hands, arthritis, something like that, it's gonna make it a lot easier to attach and detach those hydraulics. However, it's a very costly upgrade and I think for most of us, it's just a really nice to have feature. It should be pretty low on the priority list. If you can get it, you have a lot of extra room in your budget, go for it. But for me, at the price point of that feature, it's something I can live without. The last thing that I'm kind of on the fence if you should get or not is gonna be a engine block heater. And for me, I've always stored my equipment or for the vast majority of the time indoors. Um, so I haven't really ever needed one of those. On the occasions that I do have it stored outdoors, I'm not storing it somewhere where I can plug in and have it preheat. Now all these modern compacts also have glow plugs or some sort of preheating system built into them as well. I typically don't have a lot of trouble getting tractors started in the cold weather. And I've also found that the prices that are being charged for some of these block heaters seem to be kind of steep for what they are. I know a lot of guys have gone out into the aftermarket world, got their own block heaters out there. It's a pretty simple install to put on yourself. So if you're looking at an option like that, and if you're handy at all, you may want to look into the aftermarket. And so this last one is good and bad depending on who you're buying from. If you're going to John Deere, Kubota, whoever it is, oftentimes they're going to give you like a $250 credit um, to take off of an attachment that you want to buy along with your tractor. And sometimes you have to use that towards the loader or the bucket, but oftentimes you can use that towards an additional attachment as well. So I would always encourage you to take advantage of that savings. However, if you are going to be shopping for a lot of tractor attachments, then I would encourage you to check us out. We sell all sorts of tractor attachments. I try to find the absolute best that are on the market out there, the best features, great pricing, great quality. I'd put it on the same level as pretty much any OEM attachment that's on the market today. So you got to check us out. Give us a shot. Goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. So that is going to wrap it up for us today. If you did enjoy this video, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below. We're putting out new videos all the time. We'd love to have you tag along. If you own a tractor already and went through this experience, help some other folks out. Leave a comment down below. This is just my opinion in this video. So it helps to have other few points as well. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.